As car enthusiasts, we don't see 20,000 bucks as an addition to our savings account or a down payment on a house. <laughs> Hell no, the stack of cash means one thing and one thing only, sick ass car, baby. And today, I'm gonna give you an incredible list of eight driver's cars that you can pick up for under 20 Gs. I'm Brad, this is Idealist, and let's go. Okay, if you think V8 muscle is just an American thing, think again. Because from across the pond exists one of the sweetest and most stylish V8 sports cars that even you and I can afford. It is, of course, the E9X M3. This generation of M3 is truly one of the best platforms for enthusiasts. And I've owned one. I can agree. You see, it can be turned into absolutely anything that you want. Slam it drift it, or track it. It's an E9X, it's got the goods. And we're talking 400 plus horsepower from a four liter naturally aspirated V8 that's won more awards than I did in high school. Well, more than zero. No, seriously, this thing keeps revving until 8,300 freaking RPM. But performance isn't all this Euro Muscle King has to offer. Remember, this is a BMW, the ultimate driving machine. And that includes supreme comfort as well. Step inside and you'll be met with some of the prettiest leather seats you've ever seen and a driver-centric dash that keeps you engaged at all times. When this first came out back in 08, journalists literally fawned over this car and said it was nearly perfection in factory form. Well, except those throttle actuators and rod bearings. But perfection, it's expensive, right? Nah, nah, it don't have to be. We found multiple E9 XM3s for 20 grand or under, and you can certainly too. In fact, we've linked to all these cars in the description below, so go check them out. Maybe you'll find an ideal deal. Yeah, while the M3 is perfect for the streets, what about something a little bit more rowdy? Something fit for rally stages instead? Well, say hello to none other than the legendary Mitsubishi Evo. With a production run that spans over 20 years, built as a homologation WRC fighter and an incredible road car, there's a variety of Evos that'll tickle any fancy and absolutely get your blood pumping. I mean, look, this wasn't some cheap attempt at an all-wheel drive sedan that we see over and over and over again these days. Uh -uh. This was a purpose-built rally machine that became the name in all-wheel drive performance and was so incredibly cool that Brian O'Connor drove one in Fast and Furious. Take that as you will, SCI fans. But in all seriousness, what makes the Evo such a special car is the commitment of Mitsubishi. Like Porsche has their 911, Mitsubishi took their time with the Evo, refining and tuning it over the generations to make it absolutely perfect for the enthusiast. At its core, you're getting savage turbocharged four banger noises, a healthy dose of power, a manual transmission of course, and spaceship level all wheel drive tech taken straight from the rally stages of WRC. It's phenomenal for all types of weather and even all types of bank accounts too. You know, the Evo is getting more and more desirable every day, but look thoroughly and you'll find them for under 20K. That rhymed. This next car is the spiritual successor to one of the most legendary toge carving machines of all time, the AE86, baby. Sold as the Toyota GT86 in Japan and as the Subaru BRZ here in the States, the FRS is essentially the same exact car with just a couple of tweaks. It's a simple formula that even your boy can figure out. Lightweight, rear wheel drive, manual transmission, and a ton of fun. The FRS is a car that enthusiasts dreamed of for years after the other classic Japanese sports cars like the S2000 and RX-7 had to be killed off. And when we were at our most desperate for the perfect front engine rear drive layout once again, Toyota, they came out swinging, baby. With the two liter flat four providing around 200 horsepower and near perfect weight distribution, the FRS was, and still is, a monumental hit within the enthusiast community. When I first drove one, I couldn't believe how much fun I was having. You can use every bit of power and grip this car has, constantly shifting and sitting on the edge of the limits, yet still not be going fast enough to land you in jail. That's a pretty sweet deal in my book. And the even better deal, you can still pick these up for well under 20K on the marketplace. We found this low mile beauty for around 17, and there are several others on the market for way less than that. But why don't we take things up a notch to the fancy Arma Toyota, the Lexus ISF. If you've never heard of this thing, well, I'm stoked to introduce to you what I think is one of the most unique cars on this list. Lexus decided to spice up their IS line of sedans. 
and stick a whole five liter of V8 under the hood, making 416 sweet horses. Just take a listen. And guys, that's just the beginning. With the ISF, you get Lexus's unmatched suspension tuning, sticky tires, and rear wheel drive if you're the kind of person who likes big smoky burnouts. Plus, you get a snappy paddle shift eight speed automatic that'll get you to 60 in just 4.4 seconds. That's just as quick as the E92 M3 we talked about earlier. And to me, the ISF has that cool element of stealth speed hidden under its formal Lexus dinner party attire. And you won't find a more reliable and well-built car for under 20 grand, like we did with this $19,000 ISF. And if you'd like to learn how to make money driving any of these cars on this list today, well, go check out our new workshop on the ideal car strategies. I'll link to it down below. Of course, when you think 90 Skyline, your brain goes immediately to the GTR. But because even the worst example of an R32 GTR is big money, we've chosen the next best thing, the Skyline GTS T. It was a lower trim level that utilized the 212 horsepower RB25 inline six, but importantly, it's really good drive. So if you want that classic sports car layout, the GTS-T might even be a better option than the GTR. You can drift it, rotate around a corner more easily, and shred those rear tires on command. Plus, there's a huge aftermarket community for these cars that'll help you get all the power and grip you've ever wanted out of your GTS-T. But don't get me wrong, because the GTS-T is great in stock form too. Hell, I mean 200 plus horsepower, rear drive, manual transmission, sports car with timeless sexy coupe styling? Whew, sign me up. And guess what? You don't have to spend GTR money either. Bam, 16K for this GTS-T Type M with the bigger wheels and brakes. It's a no brainer. Yeah, I think it's time for a red-blooded American classic. How about the C6 VET? In a time before the modern automatic supercar-esque C8 Corvette, we had one that was built as God intended. Front engine and rear wheel drive, baby. The C6, even with its faux Rari looks, had a ton of curb appeal. It gave customers what they had always expected and more with savage power, mini gearbox, and handling that just kept getting better with every generation. It was lower and it was wider than the previous C5 and powered by the best small block ever, the LS. In its lowest trim, it came with 400 horsepower and went way up from there. And it sounded like hell came to earth in the best way possible. If it's cheap power you like, the C6 is undoubtedly the king of the hill and you can get something like this silver C6 for just around 17 grand. But as you know, power isn't everything, and the Mini Cooper S John Cooper Works GP is here to prove it. Okay, I know what you're thinking. A Mini? Like the toaster looking cars you see out at Trader Joe's? Well, yeah, but the JCW GP is a whole other breed. You know, the British company decided to go all out with this thing deleting the rear seats, tightening the suspension, adding a sexy rear wing, and tossing in a handful of power too. And guys, let me tell you, this car is an absolute riot to drive anywhere at any time. Even the regular Cooper S is fun, but all the added flair in the GP, there's nothing quite like it. The early GP1 version had a supercharged 1.6 liter four cylinder that made 215 horsepower. Wow, the GP2 opted for a turbocharger with the same basic output. Regardless, these are spicy little machines that will change your mind about front wheel drive. And because they only weigh 2,600 pounds, that power goes a long way. The newest GP3 version is unfortunately too expensive to be on this list, but a GP1 or two could be found for around 20 grand, like this one that just sold for over 18. Okay, we here at Ideal love the Mini Cooper GP, but you know, we gotta finish this video with a true sports car icon, one that I've owned three of. E46 M3. It's hard to name a more widely known and more importantly, widely loved BMW. This car deserves all the hype that comes with it. The legendary S54 inline six pumps out 330 high revving horsepower and delivers an awesomely raspy engine note to go along with it. But the engine is only half the magic here. E46's combination of chassis balance, steering feel and timeless Bavarian design make this M3 probably the ultimate enthusiast daily driver. In my opinion, yeah, and I've owned three of them. The manual transmission and coupe versions are the way to go. But honestly, the SMG automatic and convertible options, which I own that exact spec, are great too. Because these are so iconic nowadays, it's getting harder to find affordable examples. But if you look in the right spots, you can still find one that's clean, silver, and a manual coupe for 18.5.
Now, I'd be happy with any of these ideal cars, but which one would you guys pick with a stack of cash? Let us know down below. And do me a favor, go check out this vid up here or maybe one of these down here. Also, I'll link to our brand new shirts like this one, whoop, right here. Like, subscribe, turn on that notification bell. I'm Brad, this is Ideal, and promise me one thing, keep living the ideal lifestyle.